Good afternoon, everybody. I think I'm between everyone here and the cookie and coffee coma that comes up somewhere in the middle of the day. Hopefully, they're going to provide cookies and I'm not disappointing everyone. Today, we're going to talk about a fairly boring but incredibly important topic around cold storage and some solutions as to how we can help customers resolve those problems. Uh, and the cold storage issue is, is one that's pretty big. Next slide, please. Uh, there is a lot of data out there, and it's, uh, it could be data that's being used for uh, high-performance compute scenarios, the raw data that needs to be kept. Uh, it could be data that supports uh, regulatory environments. Uh, endless amounts of cold data, and the 40 zettabyte number is, I think that's another uh, source that put that out, but we all know it's big, and we know that the trend line points toward data being retained for longer and longer periods. And with the additional capabilities of compute, there's more and more reason and more value associated with that data. How do we keep that data? So traditionally, data has been kept on tape originally. Uh, then hard drives sort of took over that mantra of uh, being a, the, the go-to uh, uh, media for storing data. Uh, you have to power all those hard drives. They take up, uh, they have to be refreshed and recycled every few years. Uh, so that's a bit of a challenge. Tape is still plays the strongest role in the cold data archival space. Uh, and tape is a, a, a great medium with low bit rates, but it doesn't last forever. It needs to be remastered. And we'll talk through some of the scenarios of why what we're bringing to market is probably a more efficient way to look at this. So, we're from Sony. Uh, this is Everspan is the product, and it's the branding for the uh, Everspan Optical Library. Uh, I'm actually with my partner, John Goodman, from Hitachi Data Systems, and we're going to talk about a collaboration that takes our solution and makes it uh, actually uh, a little bit more interesting than it alone. So what are we bringing to the table? And we'll talk about how we integrate with Hitachi as well. So this is an optical storage solution that is based on blue laser technology. And before we say Blu-ray, uh, it follows the, uh, the suit from blue laser technology of Blu-ray to the blue laser technology in archival disk. Uh, and what archival disk has done is it's added uh, some significant uh, advancements to Blu-ray technology. It's a multiple, multiple layer technology, today a three layer, potentially going to beyond three layer with densities at 300 gig per platter with a target of one terabyte or more per platter. And this is using uh, a similar form factor, same shape and dimension as a CD or Blu-ray before it uh, in a different drive uh, solution. What do we bring to the table in terms of the drive technology? Well, one rub against optical technology in the past has been is it's slow, and consumer optical technology is slow. Uh, and commercial applications that have leveraged uh, Blu-ray for archive uh, just don't do very well. And the reason they don't is they operate with a single laser, uh, and maybe you can get 20 to 30 megabytes per uh, second or so, and then less so with write and write verify. Uh, what we've brought to the table with uh, Sony Optical Archive is an eight laser solution. We have write sustained of over 145 megabytes per second, reads at over 280, uh, bursts over 300. So basically this is a performance solution that can operate in a data center market. And what does that bring to the table for archiving? It means this is truly an active archive. You can leverage this and have near, on, near line storage available even from a deep archive at a low cost. Um, the solution provides uh, lasers that can last multiple petabytes of, of writes. Uh, they are a wear item, but eventually they, they do get replaced. Uh, but these are incredibly long lasting compared to consumer technology. Um, one positive point about optical technology forever has been backward compatibility. You can buy a Blu-ray player today, even an ultra high definition Blu-ray player today, and you can read a CD that was pressed in the 80s. Uh, and that is a truism that has carried forth with optical. And as we talk through some of the considerations of why optical over tape, one of the big pieces is the concept of remastering. At some point, tape degrades. It's magnetic. 
Uh, it also doesn't like bad environmental things like uh, uh, magne electromagnetic pulses or things that are inadvertent like salt water because floods actually happen and tape then is pretty much um, something you can relegate to the, the waste paper can at that point. So optical technology doesn't um, suffer through a lot of those uh, physical layer challenges. Uh, basically, they, they don't even need to be uh, kept in uh, environmental conditions that are as stringent as that for tape or even hard drives from both the humidity, temperature, etc. So again, some advantages over this technology. It's an inorganic, non-magnetic material. It doesn't degrade, doesn't suffer through uh, impact of, of magnetism or even salt water uh, uh, encroachment. Um, next slide, please. So we put this all together into a library model. And a library model means we disaggregate drives from media. Uh, this is a library that can expand up to 14 cabinets, can store over 900,000 disks on trays of 64. Those trays of 64 are an atomic unit for import and export into the library. There are also 64 drives, and we can support uh, variable uh, uh, erasure coded rates from four all the way to 64 drives in a set, depending on the workload and performance and capacity requirements. So disaggregated, erasure code protected with a high degree of uh, control in terms of how you protect that data uh, on the library itself. Because this is disaggregated and it's a row level model, the power is all from the front, from the drive side. Uh, the solution can more or less be run in a warehouse. Uh, we need to cool the front end, which is the end that's seen. And we can talk about this after as well. The rest of it is a, mostly a passive cabinetry with rails and the ability to retrieve the disk trays. We warranty the media. We put our money where our mouth is for 100 years. Uh, I think the only stipulation is we want you to write data within the first 10. Uh, and arguably, uh, the 100-year warranty is covered for uh, uh, within, a, within a pretty wide latitude of uh, environmental conditions, but arguably uh, the media can sustain much worse conditions and survive probably much longer as well. And out of the gate, what we offer is interfaces to uh, a native S3 uh, compatible object store interface, as well as through partnerships with other vendors outside of uh, Hitachi uh, toward different tape solutions uh, to broaden that ecosystem. But one of the things I think we're uh, talking about here today with our solution is we don't do this all alone. We are a piece of plumbing in the infrastructure. We store the data, and we work with partners who can help evolve that, uh, that ecosystem. Um, and so in this case, we have Hitachi here on stage, and, and their solution is uh, around their Hitachi content platform. And I'm going to let John take a few minutes and talk about that, and we'll bring it up for questions as well. So Hitachi Content Platform is our object store. Um, using Hitachi Content Platform, we can help you manage that data and ingest that into the Sony Everspan. Um, we, can, we have different products such as uh, Hitachi Content Intelligence, which allows you to search and index data. Um, we've got our HDI NAS Gateway, which allows you to on-ramp data, um, as well as our ACP Anywhere which allows you to, is basically Dropbox for your enterprise. Um, on the front, of, front end of HCP, we, have, we can speak different protocols, such as S3, REST, um, and SIFS and NFS. Um, so let's see. We, we are a proven object storage leader, enterprise focus, and compliance with compliance and retention. Uh, lowest cost search to serve, rely, re, reliable, and long-term retention. Um, I think one, one of the things I would like to add to this is that the solution alone from Sony is standalone as an object store, but we don't support file systems out of the box. Um, and we all know that there's a, an, an enormous amount of data that hasn't yet made itself suitable for puts and gets. So, the, an approach that we might have taken is we could have uh, built the same mousetrap as everybody else, uh, or we work through a partnership program with folks like Hitachi. So the, the value proposition that maybe isn't as self-evident is that uh, 
the Hitachi solution can provide things like file access, which means applications don't change, but behind the scenes, the ability to tier to cost-effective storage uh, on demand or on schedule or on policy is really the value add. Similarly, uh, Sony provides uh, the infrastructure to store uh, up to uh, today, up to about 180 petabytes of, of storage. Uh, and within uh, the same frame and, and same roadmap that we can talk about, up to 730 or so petabytes at, at some point. However, arguably, that's not as useful unless you can leverage that in an existing infrastructure at first. Search is a function that Hitachi right. could add. Uh, uh, the file system function is, a, is one that Hitachi could add. Uh, compliance uh, for uh, uh, SEC 17A4 and financial regulatory compliance pieces are things that Hitachi can do a good job in overlaying into our solution. Uh, so basically the, the principle here is that uh, we provide a plumbing solution to provide the lowest cost to serve long-term storage that has a near line capability in terms of read and write speeds uh, and we use partners to extract that value in a, a functional setting like dropping it into an existing data center and, and making it work. Um, that is uh, kind of the, the short version. We wanted to leave it open for questions, and uh, we'll see where we can take it from there. I can't see anyone, so if there are questions, just yell. No. And if there are no questions, it's OK, too. Yeah, if anybody has any questions afterwards, just come find me, and I can, I can help answer those as well. Okay. Well, it was brief and to the point. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>